Um, hi, everyone. Welcome to my presentation on how to use a pure transform model for 3D rendering. My name is Chong Zeng, and this is joint work with Yue Dong, Peter Pierce, Hong Zhi Wu, and Xin Tong. So we know that attention is all you need in wide range of applications, including both text and visual content generation. This leads to the question, can transformers also be used for rendering? And we found that the answer is actually yes. Attention is still all you need for rendering. Our solution is Renderformer, a new fully transformer-based new rendering pipeline. At its core, it takes a standard 3D scene and processes it end-to-end -end within a transformer model, directly outputting the final 2D image with full global illumination effects, all in a single pass, no matter how complex the light transport is. The model learns this completely from data with very few built-in assumptions. Once it's trained, Renderformer can render completely new things in instantly with no need for per scene training or fine tuning. So let's start with the basics. The goal of 3D rendering is to take a virtual 3D scene, everything from the objects and materials to the lights and camera, and generate an image that is indistinguishable from a real photograph. To understand our approach, let's look at a helpful analogy first, how transformers handle machine translation. Typically, this process starts by encoding a sentence from the source language into a sequence of tokens. The transformer model then translates these tokens into a new sequence for the target language. Finally, this new sequence is decoded to form the final sentence. This entire framework is known as sequence-to-sequence -sequence transformation. Okay, so let's bring this idea back to rendering. Imagine we treat this 3D thing as a sentence where each word or token is simply a triangle in the mesh. Following that logic, the final 2D image is also a sentence where each word represents a pixel or block of pixels. This means we can reframe the entire rendering pr process as a translation task, going from a sequence of trans triangles to a sequence of pixels. Essentially, we have just turned 3D rendering into a sequence-to-sequence -sequence transformation problem. And let's start with how we encode the 3D thing. First, we treat every triangle in the scene as a single token. We then encode that triangle's key properties into the token's embedding. This includes its vertex normals, material reflectance, and any emitted light. Next, we embed the triangle's position using a relative spatial encoding method derived from rope. The key idea here is that by mapping each triangle to a single token, we preserve all the native 3D information of the scene right from the very start. So that's the 3D part. On the other side of the formulation, tokenizing the 2D image, we use the camera rays. We leverage a simple principle Every pixel in the final image corresponds to a single camera ray. However, for performance reasons, we don't encode one ray at a time. Instead, we bundle an 8x8 grid of rays into a single token. This means each output token we generate is represented by an 8x8 patch of pixels in the final image. Now, with our input and output sequences defined, the model needs to resolve two main problems. First, it has to resolve the light transport in the scene. This part is will independent. It doesn't change no matter where the camera is. Second, it has to translate the 3D scene into a 2D image, and that, of course, is will dependent. Because these two tasks are so distinct, we split the entire process into two separate transformers. First, the 3D scene tokens go through a will independent transformer. Its only job is to calculate the light transport, creating an intermediate representation of the illuminated 3D scene. Then, these transformed 3D triangle, triangle tokens are combined with our 2D camera ray tokens inside the will-dependent transformer. To combine these two distinct token types, we use cross-attention. As a final step, these tokens are passed through a DBT decoder to produce a final high dynamic range RGB image. So here's a complete illustration of our pipeline. The key thing to note is that we have built this using standard, well-established designs from the transformer community. We intentionally impose very few constraints, which make, makes our model incredibly general. This also allows us to train the entire system together and end-to-end -end from scratch. That includes both the 3D and 2D embeddings, both transformers and the final image decoder. To train our model, we generated a large and diverse data set by synthesizing thousands of things. Each thing contains one to three objects randomly pulled from the object world data set with a total complexity of around 4,000 triangles. We also randomized their material properties as well as lighting and camera placements. After training, Renderformer can render triangle mesh-based scenes without pursuing training or fine-tuning. 
That include multiple specular reflections, complex shadows, diffuse indirect lighting, glossal reflections, and multiple light sources. We can also use Renderformer to render dynamic scenes and create smooth, consistent animations by rendering each frame separately, thereby demonstrating that Renderformer is temporally consistent. Now with all these results, we know that Renderformer can render scenes, but I believe a lot of you are wondering, how general can this rendering pipeline be? What are the limitations on scenes that can be correctly rendered? To find out this, we put the model through a series of rigorous generalization tests. First, we tested how the model generalizes to scenes with different number of triangles. Unsurprisingly, it performs perfectly on scenes within its training range of about 3,000 triangles, and it fails very gracefully even with much higher complexity, it still correctly models most of, the most, most of the important light transport effects. We also tested how it generalizes to different numbers of light sources. The model was trained on things with one to eight lights, and we found it struggles when you go beyond the number, often causing artifacts like incomplete shadows. However, we can overcome this limitation by exploiting the linear nature of light transport. The same principle applies to camera placement, since the model was only trained with cameras located outside the scene, minor artifacts can appear when the camera gets too close to an object or even inside of it. As for camera's field of view, we found that the model is surprisingly robust even when using values well outside the training range. In terms of resolution, we use a two-stage training process. The model is first pre-trained at 256 resolution and then fine-tuned to the final 512 output. Well, in theory, a ray bundle method should work at any resolution. In practice, we found the model performs best around 512. When we push the model to high resolutions, it continues to fail gracefully. The errors aren't random. They are mostly concentrated at depth discontinuities. Finally, we explored the accuracy of Renderformer with respect to scene complexity, including shadow and interreflections. We observed that the shadows of occluders with complex shapes sometimes miss details, which can cause temporal jitter as seen in the right example. While Renderformer does not reason in terms of physics, physical bounces of light transport, we found that Renderformer correctly models on average three bounces of specular reflections, but higher order bounces are dropped. We believe that this is because examples with more than three bounces occur only rarely in the training data. So we have seen that Renderformer generalizes quite well, which leads to a bigger question. How does it actually work? Since the model learns everything from data, we wanted to peek inside and see what's, what it has truly learned. First, to visualize information in triangle tokens transformed by the wheel independent stage, we train a small decoder that translates each token to a simple color texture. We train this decoder on a small set of simple diffuse things. The results show that this early stage has already resolved a significant portion of diffuse light transport between triangles as well as shadows. Next, let's look at wheel dependent stage. Here we can visualize which triangles the model pays attention to when calculating the final color for a ray of light. As you can see, it focuses heavily on the directly visible triangle, but it also looks at the tri triangles in the direction of the reflection. We can also see that the weight distribution changes when we increase the roughness of the material. Finally, when we visualize the ray to ray attention, we discover something unexpected, namely that the model has taught itself a classic graphics technique, screen space reflection. It intelligently learns to connect a point to its reflection elsewhere on the screen. This is super exciting because it suggested that we can potentially discover even more rendering tricks just by digging deeper into how random former work. To conclude, we have introduced Renderformer, a fully transformer-based rendering pipeline that renders the final image complete with global illumination directly from a 3D mesh. It does this in a single file pass, and most importantly, it's a general solution that works on new things right away with no precinct training required and with minimal prior constraints. Attention is still all you need for rendering. And of course, this is just the beginning. While traditional rendering methods have been refined for decades, Renderformer is brand new, so there's clear roadmap for future work. We're excited to tackle these next steps, like scaling to larger things, and the support for textures and more complex materials, and of course, continuing to improve its overall speed and efficiency. We believe Renderformer is a promising future rendering paradigm because modern GPUs are now dedicated more and more of their architecture to AI workloads, specifically for transformer models. By building a new transformer-based rendering algorithm, we can unify computations on GPUs and leverage this powerful new hardware. 
And more importantly, we believe that random format eventually can serve as a graphics foundation model applicable to a wide variety of applications. For example, its global attention mechanism might offer new insights for inverse rendering. Its data-driven methodology also suggests a possible path towards unifying photorealistic and non-photorealistic rendering. Additionally, as a newer method, it inherently supports high throughput batch rendering, which is very useful for embodied AI. These are just a few possible directions, and we believe there are many more potential applications we haven't even considered. We feel that future research in any of these areas will be very interesting and promising. So thank you for your attention. Please visit our project page for more results and details.